Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to The Living Room, a now bi-monthly session for conversation and information sharing on topics related to sustainable jewelry practices. We cover a variety of topics from practical tools that can be implemented in your jewelry practice to in-depth learning about artisanal mining, for example. Today, we're doing things a little differently and hosting a more casual conversation. So we'll see what topics we arrive at. Uh, we'll still have some takeaways and a recording available as usual. I'm Ana Brazetite, educator, uh, Education Director and Consultant at Christina T. Miller Sustainable Jewelry Consulting. And I'm glad to be here with all of you and my teammates, Christina Miller, our founder and lead consultant, and Cecilia Echeverri, um, Director of Operations and Outreach and consultant as well. Um, through our educational and consulting services, we provide strategy, guidance, and education on responsible sourcing and sustainability for the jewelry industry. You can find out more at christinatmiller.com, and you can always reach out to us with um, your questions and suggestions uh, for future topics on the living rooms um, and anything else you wanna chat with us about. We want to say a big thank you to those of you who uh, have been able to contribute to making these sessions happen through the pay what you want option on our website, as well as to everyone here for showing up for this conversation or listening to it down the road. Uh, quick housekeeping, this conversation is being recorded and will be in the public realm. We encourage your participation through the chat. Um, and we usually say we may read some questions or comments out loud, but this session is gonna be pretty focused on that. So um, for best sound quality and for the recording, please make sure your microphone is on mute while you're not speaking. And remember, this is a kind community space, so please be respectful of everyone's privacy and personal space if you're using the chat. Our next living room session will be in the new year, January 19th. Please sign up for our newsletter to receive a reminder about that, as well as the takeaways from the session. You'll find the link in the chat or in the caption below if you're watching this later. Um, and now I'll hand it over to Christina to start our session today. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Anna and um, Cecilia, for helping all, you know, all the work that we do behind the scenes to host these. Uh, it's a great team to work with. Um, I wanted to share, you know, something, I think sometimes our consultancy is confusing to people about what we do. So I've been really thinking about um, the fact that it's uh, landing, it looks a lot like the intersection of three roads um, coming together. And it looks like support for jewelers specifically who are embarking or in the middle of or at some challenging point in their sustainability and responsible sourcing journeys. So in the form of support, that's one of the roads. And then we're also here to help develop um, more socially and, and environmentally beneficial supply chains for um, the people who are doing the mining and communities that are impacted. And then in particular, making sure that um, we are centering the needs of those most negatively impacted by our industry. Um, so we, we sort of work where those three things come together. And sometimes that looks like work for um, nonprofit organizations who are doing work on the ground with artisanal mining uh, communities, for example, and are trying to reach a market for their products that matches the values they're trying to build into the supply that they're developing. Um, and, uh, and it often looks like working with you. So we wanted to share real quick at the top that we have several different ways as you're talking to your friends and colleagues, since many of you know us, um, we have a lot of different ways for for folks to engage with us or and with these ideas from um, our foundations for sustainable jewelry practices online course. We're gonna have a new cohort starting in January and uh, we have 
some nice opportunities if you want to share this out. We also have an affiliate program for that course. If you would like to help get the word out about the course, um, there's benefit in it for you to uh, to support that project. And it's it is it's for everyone essentially who's wondering how to deal with all these various situations that you're seeing within the industry and you want to have a place to get grounded, um, whether you're starting out or already established. We also have a package that we're just about ready to launch in a formal way for um, small businesses and independent uh, jewelers. It's a consulting packages that includes eight weeks or eight sessions, actually. How fast it goes is kind of dependent on you. But it's eight sessions and it goes from solidifying your values to implementing practices that align with those values from your sourcing to the words that you use to um, um, other avenues that you pursue to ever in an ever um, increasing way commit to um, improving your practices. And then, you know, how you talk about that with your clients and your customers and then when we work with larger companies, we usually do this custom scope of work idea where, you know, they come to us with a challenge and then we figure out together how long it's going to take um, to make something like that happen. And we do do that kind of work and are um, happy to. Okay, so. Today we wanted to kick off uh, the conversation um, with perhaps with Fair Mind, since several of you were on the Fair Mind trip. Um, there was a recent one to uh, Colombia. Um, we are also looking at a variety of other things that we could talk about today. And then we have a poll for you because we have some questions about what you would be interested in um, living room sessions covering in 2024 and beyond. So we'll bring that up later. So if you wouldn't mind using the chat at this time, you know, if there was something in particular that you were hoping to chat about, um, and in the meantime, I'm going to launch a question to my teammates, Anna and Cecilia, to share, you know, it's, we, th we feel pretty lucky that all three members of our consulting team have been to visit mines. Um, and um, it's pretty special. So, Cecilia, I'm going to go to you first. You are from Colombia. Mm -hmm. But this was the first time you went to visit. You're a jeweler, you're from Colombia, and this was the first time you made this journey. So what what were some of your takeaways? Uh, well, it was lovely to be there. Um, it was thrilling to meet the miners in person. There is so much for us to learn from them and they from to learn from us. Um, I think one of the things that we really need to somehow, and I'm not pretty sure how, is to have closer connection between us and the miners, between us and refiners, to sort of close the gap between the supply chain, and not in terms of a linear fashion, but us as jewelers more directly communicate, share, and just get to know like each one of those sort of stops in the supply chain from the miners all the way to retailers. I think we really need to uh, start speaking one-on-one, -on -one, sharing uh, from the heart. So that was one of the best experiences from that trip in Colombia. It was amazing to see also how different the mines were, how they function in different ways, how they're organized uh, to serve the community and the stakeholders differently. Um, and it, I, I missed, for example, an opportunity to um, have some sort of exercises or workshops within the trip. Because for example, something that I think we need is uh, a little bit of sort of a role-playing methodology. So we all understand how each of us is coming from a different perspective and how that impacts our decision-making pro process. 
So it would be great to have a, a sort of exercise where you can be in the shoes of the miner or the refiner or the retailer and see how these dynamics are different and then how you can bridge those, those gaps and have everything become more cohesive. So it that was that was um a bit lacking in our trip, but overall it was wonderful to be there in real time. And uh, I can't wait to do it again. Yeah. Um I'll I'll chime in a bit too. Um and I see Linda asking in the chat um just in general about what the what the trip is like. Um, so as an overview, um, of the Alliance for Responsible Mining, which has been, um, which created the Fair Mine Standard, has been, um, organizing trips to go visit some of the Fair Mine certified mines, um, over the past few years. It's a relatively new program. They're still kind of working through, um, how it can work best for a group trip. But um, overall, it was a wonderful experience. This past uh, September was when we went to Colombia. The year prior, they had organized a trip where the folks uh, visiting went to uh, three mines in Peru. Um, so I think it's something that's going to continue that anyone can um, look, keep an eye out for and take part if you're interested in going more directly to learn at the source. Um, I would say that um, one of my biggest takeaways from just being there in person, um, I keep coming back to just how much the miners are able to accomplish with the premium that we pay. So I know that we sometimes as jewelers um, do have a challenge in figuring out how to, you know, market something to our clients that is a higher cost than a lot of things out there. You know, now we kind of like to say that it's not really a higher cost. It's, it's what gold should be priced at. Um, and everything else is just cheaper because it's coming at the expense of people and planet. Right. Um, but I do understand that it's still a challenge. Uh, I think it's a really worthy challenge to take on because to us, it's not a huge one. It's not a huge obstacle to pay that little bit of more of a premium and then figure out how to get it out in the world to people. But at the mines, to the miners that are working so hard to get this material to us, it makes such a huge difference. Um, when we were able to hear from, you know, each, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the miners we spoke with were worked at Minachere and uh, Ikira mine. And at each of the mines, uh, when they were sharing with us all the things that they were able to accomplish with the premium in their communities, you know, uh, environmental cleanups, uh, purchasing plots of land for preservation, purchasing a plot of land to build housing for all of their miners, um, social programs for the elderly, for folks with disabilities, um, improvements at the local schools, fixing the roads, like the list just went on and on and on. And it really, it really just blew me away how much we can accomplish by supporting that program. So, um, and not to put either Will or Bliss on the spot, but they were on the trip too. So I would say, if you feel like sharing, totally fine if you're just in listening mode, but if you wanna chime in, we, you know, we'd love to hear too, so. I'm happy to talk. Hi, Yay, everybody. Hi, Bliss. Hi, all. I haven't seen you since the trip. It was a really, really good experience. I think that um, I'm not sure who's on the call and what you're looking to hear from it. Oh, you know what? I can show you something really amazing. Hold on one second. So I now have a library of Fairman Gold in my studio to show my clients. I don't know if you can, I can't see my screen very well, but if you can see this. Wow. So when we were in 
the mine, um, we got to climb inside, up inside of a gold vein and learn about it. And so I went climbing into the rocks and I found this piece of quartz and you can see the blast of oh how gosh. they, how they blasted the rocks. And then um, I got a little bit of this, which, you know, we got some, I got a little fool's gold to show my clients um, some pyrite. And then I have a, some gold, if you can see, just like casting grain. And so now when I talk to my clients, I can tell them firsthand and have them hold the stones and then really understand like what it was and why it's important. And you know, that's like, it's a small thing, but like, just like that physical explanation is really beautiful. And also the physical experience of like walking into the mine hole, seeing the miners doing their job, seeing the pride that they have. Like, I don't know that I'll, I'll, I'm all forever. I'm forever changed from that experience. Um, you know, <clears throat> also like the camaraderie of getting to meet the other jewelers along the way. And like, I had the glorious team from, you know, Cecilia and Anna was there. Like, so that was all wonderful. And I'm really, really glad I did it. And I would love to go see an alluvial mine next for sure. Cause I feel like I, I only know one piece of the story now and I want to learn more. That's it. Yeah, totally. Thank you, Bliss. I would echo all those thoughts as well. It was really amazing to kind of have connect with a community, both at the mine site, but also, you know, folks that we were traveling with and talking to the other designers and makers and suppliers. Um, I thought it was really amazing to just, yeah, meet the miners and kind of see firsthand all the operations um, and really see all the challenges as well. Um, it was really cool to see what they could do with the money and all the all the positive things that we were doing, but really how many challenges we are isolated from, or I am isolated from um, here, you know, in Vermont um, and in the U.S. I expect I can, you know, get, I can buy some gold grain and it could be here shipped overnight and I can have it tomorrow. Um, but yeah, just seeing the miners work on land and there's like 50 other illegal mine sites on their property. And there's no, you know, help from the government or police forces to help enforce that. Um, and so anyone could come and take over their mine. Um, and there's just nothing really stopping that besides goodwill and trust. Um, so just like constantly living in that much risk and just so many challenges that they face every day. Um, it was very eye-opening and humbling. Linda? Yes, hi everyone. I'm completely brand new to the industry. Um, and I'm first a documentary photographer. So a lot of my projects are just, even if they're controversial, it's just to educate and plant seeds so that it's not coming from one hard line point of view so that you engage people more in the dialogue and then they can start to consider other things and just by becoming licensed, um, I'm friends with a really big jeweler who he told me he's looking into it and I, I don't really talk about it or because he does everything like the traditional commercial way. And so sometimes when you're fair mind, then people feel a little like there's an ethical thing there, right? But now it's interesting just from that, he's looking into it. So my interest in visiting the mines is I'm wondering if it's possible if I can document it and and if I could document that and all the things that Anna just was talking about, how it affects their community and how they use the money and how it helps with the schools. And then it would be great if I ever get that uh, published. My work has been published. And then that educates the consumer. So what drives everything is the consumer. And there's so many people that don't really understand that even recycled gold and you know, is <clears throat> not really what they think it is oftentimes. And I think that in terms like of a mission for fair mind and for the communities, um, that that's something that really interests me. And I don't, I don't know if that's possible or that can be discussed yes. at some point. I think it would be a great opportunity, Linda. And in, in my opinion, I think that your best bet is to obviously get in touch with Fairmind, watch out for the next trip and be um, 
like close in touch with them for this purpose to document your journey. They did have a videographer in the trip with us and he's right now doing all the work behind the scenes to put everything together. So you could do something similar. There are some, uh, as, as, as some colleagues were telling us, uh, maybe some limitations in um, filming some things inside the tunnels because for security issues, the miners sometimes don't want to you know, discuss here's the vein or, or it's over there or whatever. Um, there's always, uh, remember that we're dealing with mines in very remote places. Things can change last minute and you have to be able to be flexible and pivot. Um, for example, in the case of Colombia with the um, security problems that they have there right now, um, we were not able to go to the mines, only a very small group did. Uh, but some of us never went to the actual mine, so we met the miners elsewhere. Um, but yes, it's possible to document your experience, um, you know, get yourself in alliance with Fair Mind and, and do something incredible. So you should absolutely go Thanks. for it. I'm used to all those uh, limitations mm -hmm. and access and things and changing at the last minute and getting permissions and things. So um, I understand it depending where the mine is at. Colombia might be more difficult than Peru, exactly. Exactly. but, um, so I would, but thank you so much. And, um, I'll, I'll look into that, Cecilia. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I would just add that I think it would be so valuable to have such a project. Um, you know, we, uh, are always looking for ways to get the word out to consumers and raise awareness and, just another beautiful artistic avenue would be such a joy to have. So definitely encourage you to do that. <laughs> I love that um, there is a comment from Cassandra about uh, visiting mines in the United States as another um, adventure. Um, there is actually a ton of mining happening in the United States um, from large scale to small scale of all materials, precious metals to colored gemstones. Um, you can even go, you know, diamond digging in Arkansas at a national park. <laughs> I don't know how many pe people are aware of that, but um, so we have, we have all the minerals um, within the United States and um, actually traveling to visit the sites is something that really informed um, the work that we do now and also the direction that ethical metalsmiths uh, went after um, my co-founder uh, of ethical metalsmiths and I, Susan Kingsley, went in 2007 to visit mines um, across the U.S. We visited um, active large-scale mines um, mines that were uh, ready for to begin. They had already gotten approval. They knew where it was going to go, et cetera, but the mining had not begun yet. The exploration was finished. Then we also visited um, a few abandoned sites. Um, there are thousands of abandoned mines across the US. So um, here you can actually see the entire life cycle, um, both, um, you know, what's to come and you can see with your own eyes the you know various claims that are made about the benefits that for instance that large scale scale mining brings to communities um you can sort of test for yourself whether or not you believe that statement to be true uh when you conduct a trip i know susie gonch is here with us we've she's an educator um in richmond virginia jeweler artist um friend we've often talked about how amazing it would be to organize a, a long trip, like m long <laughs> with students uh, and to be able to visit and meet people along the way. Um, I don't know, before we go to Talia's uh, raised hand, does anyone have any comments or ideas, thoughts, support for such a journey? Well, it's, I to <laughs> jump in, but it's still my dream <laughs> to do it. It would be such a cool trip. I, you know, I was thinking about it while we were having this, while I was listening to the conversation that I don't know how we would fundraise for it, but it would be so amazing to have a density of students learning from 
miners, but also from jewelers that would be present. You know, the conversation around the campfire at night, if we were camping together, would be rich. And it would change all of us in ways that I can't even measure, you know, that I can't even imagine. But I I kind of hang on to that dream pretty hard. If any <laughs> ideas, please <laughs> reach out. <laughs> awesome. Um, Talia, welcome. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, this is my first time here. I, I hope I'm in the right place. Um, uh, <laughs> I am a jeweler, so so I guess so. Um, but I'm wanting to transition from uh, making everything myself to producing overseas. And that's been kind of a like uh, something I've never considered just because of all the negative uh, connotations around all that, that at least I've had in, in my world. Um, but I'm just curious if the consultations that you provide, Christina, mm -hmm. yeah, help with um, figuring out how to do that in a sustainable and an ethical way, because I really have no idea where to start with all of that. That's it. That's my question. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming. You are in the right place. Um, I hope you're feeling sort of supported right now, even though it's a virtual um, community. No, Anna, would you like to speak to this a little bit? Um, to just kind of outsourcing production. Um, honestly, it's something that I've been uh, very back and forth on myself. Um, I have... Um, I've been making jewelry, mostly fabricating myself. Um, and I think that, I think that there, there are good reasons to, to outsource once you reach a place where you're, the sustainability, like sustainability economically of your own business really needs it, right? Um, personally, I would focus in on fair mind manufacturers. Um, so if that's something that is brand new to you, um, we're big fans of fair mind here. It's a, it's a great uh, program. Um, as we were mentioning about the trip, um, it's artisanal mining um, done to a standard that, um, you know, makes sure that uh, environmental harm is mitigated uh, that the miners are safe and healthy and have a great work environment. And then there is that aspect of the premium that we pay when we buy the gold that goes back directly into community development. And it's, you know, the community's choice how to invest that in um, whatever programs they're building out. Um, and the pool of suppliers and manufacturers is growing. It's not, it's not the biggest yet, but, um, you know, new suppliers and new manufacturers are coming on, um, coming online. We even have folks here that could help out with that. <laughs> um, so definitely, you know, I would say join communities, ethical metalsmiths, like Christina mentioned, um, and we're here as CMC to help kind of guide you through that. You know, you're always welcome to sign up for a little call with us uh, to get some of those basics. Um, but I think just deciding uh, what we always start with people um, based on deciding what your values are. Um, and if those align with supporting a program like Fair Mind, um, then I think there are some great options for you to, to be able to outsource your manufacturing. Um, yeah, sorry, can I, can I, uh, yeah, no, I've, I've uh, sourced gold from Fairmine for a number of years. And then I used to be part mm, of okay. ethical metalsmiths. Um, but this was all like quite a long time ago and it, and there wasn't very much conversation even then happening, happening around it. And um, and so, yeah, I've done the best I can solo, 
but uh but yeah just just yeah outsourcing really not knowing what to do there and so you're saying i can jump on a call with with the two of you at some point and then also uh fairmind has some manufacturer options where they can produce your pieces for you yeah oh. so if you Amazing. were kind of part of the movement early on um you'll find that it really has grown quite a bit since Wonderful. those early early days yeah so between um, licensed suppliers, um, and then there's licensed manufacturers as well. You should Wonderful. be able to find some options that probably weren't there in the past. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. And you. recently we have findings as well, thank goodness. So we are making strides. Okay, mm -hmm. beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Talia. So Priya, I see your hand, but um, real quick, if you feel like popping in, um, Bliss, you've navigated this space pretty thoroughly at this point, deciding where to have your Fairmind um, jewelry line manufactured. So do you want to speak to that, what that experience has been like a little bit, things you maybe learned along the way? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Hi, Talia. I'm Bliss Lau. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I recently went on a provenance journey and traveled to obviously I went to the mine sites this year and I also traveled to go visit the, the facilities that are manufacturing for me overseas. Prior to doing that, I'm like a very like early, early client of CMC. I'm, I feel like I was one of your very first or maybe, I don't know. But um, the first thing that I did was develop a transparency review with CMC. So they formatted, we sat down, we went through everything that I needed. I wanted to be able to find a way to do like a proper vetting process and have the questionnaire ready. And so they created the process for me and it was a series of questions. They also created a script for me alongside that so I could practice. And then <clears throat> I would call and schedule meetings, go through the interview process, hear uh, and just listen to everything they say, ask really hard questions, ask about labor practices and all of these things that are necessary and important to us. So by the time I was done, I had a lens on who was completely full of it, who was totally in and all of that. And I felt confident to then begin working with different companies. And then I also work with Fairmind and I have a fabricator that I worked with for Fairmind um, overseas. And now after a few years of building my business and being able to afford it, I then went and met with the, with the fabricators this past year. I would say that like the transparency review is wonderful. You get a lot of answers like, but I'm RJC certified. Why do I have to answer these questions? You know? Um, but that doesn't really give us all the answers that we want. And what I have found is I have pleaded with so many companies to start using Fairmind and I got no after no after no after no when I went recently. It was really upsetting, um, but they do have recycled. And so a lot of that for me is deciding like, can I become important enough of a client that I can talk them into it later? What what are the holes that we have? Like I. I can't make certain things here. I have to use recycled for some things because I couldn't find somebody to use Fairmind. And like, how do we translate this sort of gray zone between the perfect world scenario and the what we can do now and the what are your goals in the future? And so as I go through that, I think the most important question for me that I learned from Christina and the team was find out what their goals are for the future. Because if they're like, you know, some people I was meeting with and they're like, I don't do it yet, but tomorrow I'm meeting with the people for solar and I'm going to get that settled. And then I'm going to do these things. And like, they had a plan and I was like in with them. They might not be there yet, but they have the plan. And so like, it's really complex with us in, as small businesses, but you know, I'm happy to share some of the people that I met with you. I'm in the process of vetting them and testing. So I've been making one or two pieces with the different people who passed the, the, who we felt like were good, going to potentially be good partners. I don't have an answer yet on who I think is good, but um, I'd be very happy to talk to you. But but I strongly would suggest going and creating it, some kind of review with the team because that was invaluable and continues to be invaluable for for me for creating the lens of what I'm looking for. We did not pay Bliss to come to this living room session for anyone uh, sitting here now and watching in the future. <laughs> I'm very grateful for your for your enthusiastic support for the work that we do um bliss uh thank you <laughs> um 
so before uh, Priya, I know you have actually similar questions um, based on conversations that we've had. Uh, before we, before I open that, I just wanted to see. There's one more kind of uh, opportunity. I don't, Will, it's kind of putting you on the spot a little bit, but do you want to talk about your, some of your offerings? Happy to. Um, yeah, I guess I'm going through a little bit of an existential crisis with my business too. So I feel like, oh, maybe I should reach out. We should consult. Um, but uh, yeah, so we be, to give us, give everyone a little more context. We have a kind of boutique custom, mostly engagement wedding ring business. Um, <clears throat> and due to not enough, uh, I guess, supplier resources with casting um, and having enough access to alloys in Fairmind, I basically bought a 3D printer and started doing, um, uh, well, kind of collaborated with Mercurius, um, Alyssa is on, Alyssa, with Alyssa Thorpe, um, to kind of uh, create more Fairmind alloys and sell them and cast in them. Um, and the hope was to basically just have more access to like rose gold, green gold, uh, palladium white gold, things like that. Um, and that's kind of started us on this more B2B venture of wholesale casting, which is, um, yeah, I love, love that. Um, but still, and I have a little bit of a background in that, but not, not tons for fine jewelry. So trying to balance, not just being a huge production house and doing the custom work. So that's kind of my own, uh, thing I'm always trying to balance. That said, I think we definitely need more suppliers of Fairmind. Um, but that comes from creating more demand. Um, and having more people, more jewelers ask for it, more customers ask for it, talking about it more in our marketing materials um, and all that kind of connects to the, I don't want to say trickle because I hate trickle down, uh, the the tree that is ethical sourcing and the industry, um, you know, it's a very, yeah, those things are all connected in a symbiotic relationship. Um, that said, I think we definitely need to, like, it is a global market. So I think it's great to rely on those, um, some international actors for that. Um, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, Christina, what was there more? You did great, Will. <laughs> Basically, um, what I would love to highlight is that you um, saw a need in the market uh, and your ambition <laughs> um, led you to, you know, create an answer for that in collaboration with uh, Mercurius. Um, and I think that that really is the key here is that um, within this community, there's a lot of folks who are really open to collaborating um, from something like this, where, you know, two businesses coming together to fill this uh, need that, that existed uh, for more Fairmind casting uh, services. And maybe even something, you know, to continue for all of us to think about, um, like, Bliss was saying, you know, she might be out there asking folks to switch to or suppliers to switch to Fairmind, but, you know, are each of us as small businesses influential enough? Maybe not, you know, maybe you come together and decide, hey, like this group of jewelers is going to go to this manufacturer and say, like, we'll all come work with you if you switch to Fairmind or if you become a Fairmind licensee, you know, so just, just planting that seed <laughs> of a continued collaboration, I would say. Yeah, and I think it's good to know one's own bandwidth with that too. Like, so we offer, you know, rough cast in fair mind materials, um, but we just, Alyssa and I just tried yesterday and decided we can't do finished, uh, finishing work um, for folks just because we both, you know, we're both two small businesses. We don't have the bandwidth for that. Um, so just knowing that and then, yeah, collaborating and, and connect with other folks too. Connect all the dots. Go team. Thank you. I want to make sure that um, Priya, you can mm -hmm. ask your question. And folks, please feel free to put your URLs. You know, we're tossing out names and businesses, but to help you all network with each other, we're totally comfortable with you putting your um, URLs for your businesses in here. Please feel free to do that. So Priya, go ahead. Don't forget to unmute. Hi everyone, um, my name is Priya Fatal. I just recently came across Christina, actually in the summer, um, and I am not from the jewelry background at all. 
but I come from a family that buys a lot of it. Um, so I was interested in starting something related to Indian jewelry because it is so popular. Um, and when I came to this conference and I heard Christina's talk, I didn't realize like the amount of pollution and everything um, involved with jewelry, how big it can get. Um, and so then I reached out to her and Anna and they were really great for the intro call. Uh, and I was headed to India to see suppliers, whatnot. And I came to find out exactly what they mentioned to me, which is that if you are outsourcing in different countries that they are not as transparent and it is very difficult to do the sustainable ethical model there. And so my question is, um, I plan to come back to you guys directly. Um, and the question would be, if you know you have a system that isn't working, how, how do you address that? Like, would you even get involved and then start at where they, where, where they are and start improving it and seeing if you can change it slowly and then kind of create a system from that um, to implement within that country? Or would you just say, don't even bother getting involved and then start from scratch, which also seems a little tedious kind of difficult sorry i don't know if that's too general of a question or if i explained enough no you have a big challenge um i feel like i feel like bliss's words may have been really resonating with you that you tested out um and you probably discovered that so are i mean have you come back with some questions that you think are directly relevant to the way your questions were received? Do you feel like you have a follow-up um, that you could do or any clues as to the potential? So um, from what I, from meeting with a ton of people there, the closest I've gotten to is that they said, unless you bring everything in house, which is, seems a little bit of a gargantuan task when I'm not in the industry at all. Um, it's very hard to control some of these factors. And therefore, I wanted to know if anyone in the living room sessions here, if they've um, experienced something of a task like this, where they maybe started off not so sustainable ethical, uh, because uh, the challenge here with this particular case is that I want to work with Indian jewelry. And the only way to do that is with the Indian artisans, right? Um, and so I have to work within that model. Um, so I don't know if there were suggestions or besides, you know, coming back to you for the next, um, call, is there anything that I can, I mean, maybe work on prior to the call or just think about or ask even more questions before I come in. So I'm a little bit more ready. And also I have a lot of videos and, um, things that I would like to share. So if you have a place that I can share that, I'd be happy to do so with anybody who's looking into anything related to India and sourcing and jewelry. Does anyone else in the group have questions or follow up for Priya before we respond? Go ahead, Bliss. I feel bad. I feel like I'm talking a lot, but Priya, um, you know, I would identify if I were you, I would identify like what are the pillars of value to me? You know, and everything is never going to, it's unlikely that everything is going to be perfect, right? So like can you identify what's valuable? Like, do I want to work with women? Do I want those women to be in a safe condition? Do I want them to be working with clean water and clean air? Like, are those the pillars? And so that maybe is your beginning pillar. And then am I going to have them buying ethical gold? Maybe they won't do that yet. But like, firstly, you're getting that safety moment for them and you're making sure you're giving them the sustainable lifestyle. And then maybe secondly, you're going to move into that thing. And so again, it's the same question that I'm asking my vendors is how can you move through the process? Because all of us are in the, in, all of us are in the process of growth and evolution. So maybe it's less of trying to find the perfect solution and more of like trying to build it within the structure as you grow and as you learn. Um, that would be my, my suggestion. Thank you for that. Um, it seems like a good starting point, um, but it does seem like a little overwhelming, actually a lot overwhelming um, <laughs> when you're working in a, a system that isn't very focused on the sustainable ethical part of it. Um, but I do find that it was better than China 
when in terms of the um the work the work culture at least i haven't seen direct polishing and all of that so much so but whatever i have seen um the, the work conditions seem to be much much better uh, so i don't know if that's a good thing um what what i hear Priya, a little bit in what you're asking is, what is okay for me to accept? I like yeah, good reframing. Yeah. Um, and if if your highest priority is working at your roots in India, then that's your first line. And it's like, you are going to start with that environment and you're gonna figure out then whatever the next step is. And the next step might be, let me look at five different artisans that I met on my trip and get to know them better. Don't have expectations about where their materials are coming from at this time or, um, uh, you know, like that's not your job in this moment. Your job in this moment is to create a relationship of trust so that those doors open to you in the future. Um, if, if you were a corporation, the advice would be completely different because your level, your scale of impact is would be completely different and your your responsibilities to respect the system that you're about to impact in a large way would mean a different approach but you're you and so you are this is a person to person moment for you and um you know maybe it's sort of the collective grace that you need right now to just try and not don't don't sweat too hard about like getting it right. Thank you. I just wanted to add something super quick, Priya. Also from how I do this is just try to touch people's lives. If you can make a difference in one life, then that's good enough for now. Never forget that we're trying to, you know, go back to the human beings that are here with us. So we have lofty goals, but if we can make a difference for somebody, that's that's very important. That's a, that's a great addition. And I, I think one, one other way to sum up kind of what Christina and Bliss and uh, Cecilia have said is to um, just think about for yourself, what are, the, what are the things you're not willing to compromise on? Like, and that becomes a starting point. And then what are the, what are the values or things that you're going to prioritize? So it might be like Bliss mentioned, you know, working with women specifically, or, and you kind of rank those things in order of importance for yourself. Um, but start with the thing that you're not willing to compromise on. Um, that's your first task to like zone in on. And then once you're there, then you can kind of start moving through your, your priorities of, okay, can I accomplish this one next? Or can I move towards this one? Um, yeah. Okay, Christina, we have we have Linda with another uh, question, but we also just a reminder we got to do the poll too. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Linda, go ahead, and then we'll we'll we will we'll go to our we would like okay. your feedback. Cool. So. I'll make it really quick. First of all, I just want to say what Christina, Anne, and Cecilia just said was like so beautiful, and I think it extends way past the whole fair mind jewelry thing on the advice that they were giving Priya. And just when I do my documentary projects, those are my parameters. And then I just do the project and then how it touches or affects people is kind of a consequence of what your value system is. And so it was so beautiful what all of them said. Uh, I think it's a uh, you know, really powerful message. I just have a real like lay person question to ask because I was listening to everybody else's questions and struggling a little bit with sourcing and stuff. So I'm in New York and I think maybe I'm, I'm just lucky that Daniel Casting is like the only guy in town. I think there's maybe somebody in Brooklyn and he does everything and has a finisher and stuff. So if I'm using him and he's my source. I just met him the other day, nicest guy. 
like so everything that he's doing is legit and within the ethical parameters, correct? Because he's fair mind, he's on the list um, that I received from fair mind. So I can feel confident in, in just uh, working him as in his casting agency. Is that correct? So for everybody, um, you still have to ask the questions. And like what we what we don't do here at CMC, like our role is not to, uh, we don't certify any companies. We don't, we don't vouch for their practices in, you know, in a really direct way. Um, you can mm. tell those that are really um, committed show up to um, ethical metalsmiths functions, to here, to our living rooms. They show up, um, they make themselves known to the community. They they verbally explain what they're doing to improve, et cetera. So while the fact is that Daniel Casting is a certified, he can manufacture with Fairmine material, the rest of his practices um, are not part of that certification. All that does is say, if you buy this, you know, you're getting something made in fair mind. He has to promise that that is that what he's making it out of. And then in the end, prove that that's what he's making it out of. And that's what you get. So that's the extent of how that the fair mind certification kind of is applied. That's for, the certification is for the mines. How his license is applied is just to his verification of his um use of the material for the products that you order. So doesn't he have to adhere to the ethical practices though? Because, you know, there's an audit and like, if you know, there's a random audit that goes and might, you know, visit his, you know, his place of business and see how he's, you know, having these things, you know, well, I'm getting all my components from him. Um, so yeah, I was a little confused by that. So it seems like the materials is the only thing that's really, um, you know, kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, that falls in within the guidelines, but it doesn't mean that necessarily his practices are in terms of handling the materials. Like if there's something that's not fair mind and he commingles it, is that kind of what you're saying? I thought, no. No, he, no, he's not going to commingle it. That's He's agreed to use the material in the way that you asked him to do. That's part of the license. Okay. Um, and I'm not trying, I'm not, uh, I'm not bringing this up in any way to question his practices or his ethics at all. That's not why I brought that didn't occur that to in me. the way that <laughs> I did. Right. Um, what I'm trying to distinguish between is what the verification that he has actually means and what it doesn't mean. So in terms of understanding what, how he runs his business, what his practices are like, how he treats employees, you know, if he has them, et cetera, those you have to find out on your own. And that's what we also guide people. And that's what Bliss was referring to. Like we help you figure out what those questions are that you need to ask so that you can make sure in addition to your responsible sourcing commitments, are you working with someone who also aligns with your, your goals for the businesses that you partner with in his overall practices? Does that, did that help distinguish the two things? Yes, that's very clear. And I, I didn't think for a minute that you were, you were uh, doing that in the beginning. You're just trying to make a distinction for me. That's yeah. a little hard here in New York because people are a little prickly. <laughs> and if, you know, yeah. sometimes it's like, if you ask the wrong questions or whatever, I don't think that's the case with them whatsoever, but I, you know, learned a lot from just dipping my toe into this industry. So thank you for your answer. Great. We are at this time, we need a little feedback from you. Um, and so we're using an interactive system. It's called Mentimeter. Um, Cecilia is going to put the code in the chat so that you can participate and then we'll share our screen. All of the feedback is anonymous. We don't see whose name or anything next to it. So feel free to respond um, with full honesty, how you feel. And what we're trying to figure out is 
what our living room sessions are going to look like in 2024. What are the kinds of topics um, that you want? We have some categories we're considering, but then we also have an open-ended uh, question at the end. So anything that's on your mind that you would like to go deeper in, et cetera, um, we can do that. So the, um, the URL, and then you need the code. So it's menti.com. Okay, I think it's ready. And then once you get there, you use the code. Uh, and the code is 23359755. Are you seeing the uh, slide? Yep. Okay. So um, obviously gold is something we have to keep coming back to over and over and over again because it's changing all the time and it's a really um, important, critical material for jewelers. So, so we have four um, options here. It, it doesn't have to be one or the other, but we'd like to know from you guys, uh, what type of session would you be most appreciative? Something about ASGM, uh, craft code, gold mining on the Amazon, consumer demand for response over ASGM. Because I and I want to clarify here. So so um, what we've heard from folks is um, fair mind. Some people, some jewelers are looking for additional options, fair mind certified mines, but also others. And there is so there is a, um, a not we know that the fair mine standard is really rigorous and difficult for artisanal miners to achieve. And so there are um, other, what they're calling like entry level standards, which craft code is one of them. So for instance, if you were interested in purchasing artisanally mined gold from a mining community that has not attained fair mine certification, but is on a continuous improvement pathway, one of their first milestones will be craft code. Um, so for those of you that might be new to this topic, this is essentially those are those points are for um, those that are interested in expanding their portfolio of um, gold coming from artisanal miners. And how would you go about doing that? I think everyone's had a chance. Awesome. Yeah, I think next question. one. So we get to all of them. And this is about gemstones. Which session would you attend? Maybe an update about um, artisanally mined diamond initiatives, something about specifically the Kimberly Process Civil Society Coalition and all the efforts they've been doing lately in the plenary session, for example. Updates on colored stones and any ASM initiatives that are out there. Or how about some standards for large scale mining? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love how this is so is real time. I think it's fascinating to me. Yeah, was... I'm like, it's a race. Who's gonna win? <laughs> <laughs> ASM diamonds, ASM colored gemstones, artisanally mined stuff we love it absolutely oh large scale mm -hmm. standard pulling in the lead yeah. or almost <laughs> so we go to the next sure i think everyone has had a chance it's good to thanks for reading them out cecilia helps Ooh. Large scale is winning, oops. Well, we haven't really talked much about it. I think that might be part of um, part of the reason. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. All right, next one. All righty, how about a session about best practices and foundational info? Something about emissions, 
um, revising the ethical frameworks and ethics. We had uh, great living rooms about two years ago about this. They were very uh, well attended. How about maybe increasing diversity? Something about terminology and the language we use in our in our jewelry. Something about circularity. Would that be something interesting? So it's, um, you know, we have, we basically have six sessions a year. Um, so this really does help us narrow down, um, you know, if you only have six sessions a year, where are you going to put your energy? Uh, cause it takes a lot to develop the sessions and get the guests and, uh, we compensate all of the guests. I don't know of any other webinar where the, we have a, stipend that we share across um, no more than three guests. Um, and that's thanks to the contribution and the business uh, that we receive from you all. So we're able to extend that to folks that help us learn with each other. Great. Okay, last all one. Right, on. Yeah, or almost last. And what other yeah. topics would be helpful? Guys, you can just type it in or if we got them you could say well, I think we're on the right track or um or what's really missing is or if there's someone you'd like to hear from you know is there a leader mm -hmm. um in the field uh or in other um other areas of sustainability that you would like to hear from. Um, all those would be good things. Open sessions of challenges and community advice to help find solutions. Somebody is talking about resources for outsourcing. Mm -hmm. We can think about sourcing, manufacturing, design, community. Are you guys seeing the panel with uh, the Zoom panel? Because I can't read. Oh, you want me to read it out? Um, international reliable sourcing sources, vetted, et cetera. Also, who's doing sustainable, ethical well um, in different parts of the world? B Corp certification, support for small businesses. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if, if you all, you know, we often um, at conferences, especially, and other uh, webinars um, cross paths with global level initiatives, like initiatives of the United Nations or on kind of a weird acronym, the OECD, but their work definitely influences how best practices are perceived um, downstream. Um, are those of interest, you know, understanding better those global initiatives? Hmm. Curious. Hearing from someone with a strong business lens to bring into the conversations, the business case for sustainability mm -hmm. um great let's go there's one more great. Okay. i think there's one more and thanks for staying a few minutes over for those of you who are able we totally get it if you have to go oh thanks i didn't see the clock sorry y'all <laughs> at any point this year why did you attend mm -hmm. Community. <laughs> Yay. 
Yeah, this is a great space. That's great. Um, yeah, in this um, open format, um, it's a little different uh, that we keep the chat open. You can talk with each other. Um, it doesn't happen in all the in all the webinars, and we aim to continue to keep it feeling like a meeting. Um, and when we bring guests in, they're meant to be really additive uh, to expand our own knowledge and experience, to learn and be connected to people who care, to find collaborative community and learn the latest developments. Wonderful. Well, let's, we really appreciate the time that you stayed on to answer those. We can close the, close the activity. Um, we won't see you again till next year unless we cross paths in another way. So happy wind down to 2023, but for you all that are counting on the season, we hope you have a great end of season for your jewelry businesses. Mm -hmm. happy, happy holidays, holidays and <laughs> we'll see y'all in the new year thanks for a lovely time today good luck this season bye bye, bye. bye. take care guys